You shouldn't applause it in advance. I might turn out to be a turkey. Um, I grew up with dogs. Some of my earliest memories have to do with dogs. I can remember um, sitting in front of a large floor model uh, radio show, listening to a radio program starring Lassie. And every week she would do something heroic, chase some bandits, save some people, maybe heal a rift in a family or whatever else. And inevitably there was a scene in the show in which she would run into the uh, kitchen of whoever the mum was at the time and go woof, 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 woof. And the mother would say, oh no, Timmy was out playing on the tractor. I told him not to do that. And now he's hurt himself. Lassie, you run down to the Smith place. Old Doc Connors is there. You bring help, and I'll see what I can do in the meantime. And you knew that, in fact, when Lassie got down to the Smith place, they'd understand what she was saying. And, in fact, so would old Doc Connors. And all I wanted to do in my life was to be able to understand my dogs as well as, in fact, Lassie's family understood their dog. <clears throat> Now, now, as a psychologist, that translates into a bunch of research questions. The first question you would ask is, well, just how intelligent are dogs? There's a man who leads a life of danger. Everyone he meets, he stays a stranger. Every move he makes, every chance he takes, all oh, he won't live to see tomorrow. All right, not exactly, right? Um, I found out after a while that what I was really trying to ask was just how uh, smart are dogs compared to humans. And uh, I came up with a little trick, and the trick is very simple. What you do is you take a test which was originally designed for testing human uh, children with limited language, and you modify the test so that you can give it to a dog. And if the dog passes the test, then that means the dog has that specific ability. Uh, and furthermore, we can then do a trick which psychologists dearly love, and we can turn that performance into a mental age and say that this particular dog is acting the same way that a child of one year of age or four years of age or whatever else. And what we find is, uh, from doing these kinds of tests, is a very simple rule of thumb. And that is that based on our testing, the average dog is equivalent to a human two-year-old. And the super dogs, those are the ones in the top 20% of canine intelligence, are equivalent to a two-and-a-half-year-old. Now, the fact of the matter is that this is really quite specific. For example, if I point to something, a two-year-old knows that, in fact, uh, that's a communication gesture and they should go there. It's harder if I point across my body. And if I point like this, two-year-olds aren't going to be able to figure this out, okay? Um, uh, but a three-year-old will. So let's see how this works. So here we have a dog, simple point. Dog goes right to the object. Point across the body, again, no problem. And now give that, and he goes, uh, duh, right? Okay, so here we have a, a two-year-old child, and we cross the body. There she goes, okay. And we go like that, and she becomes a dog, okay? All right. Uh, for a three-year-old, we point across the body. This one's a bit shy. Okay, and we point like that. She'll move. <laughs> and she gets it right. Okay. Or we could do the same thing with a leg. So, point to something with a leg. The dog knows what he's doing. Cross body still, and now point with the knee, 
and the dog looks at us and says, I don't have a clue. And eventually he'll guess. Okay. All right. And now we try it with the two-year-old girl. Crossbody. No problem. And, and she becomes a dog. Okay. And then here's the three-year-old. And she gets it right. Now, um, once we have the dog placed, then we know a whole bunch of things about dogs because people know a lot more about dogs than they do about, uh, about kids than they do about dogs. So that means the average dog is as intelligent as a two-year-old means that he can understand about 165 words. And the uh, super dogs um, can understand in excess of 250 words. This is also important because mental abilities develop over time. For example, you're not born with your full complement of emotions. Early on, you only have excitement, but then you start to get the other emotions as you grow uh, older. And eventually, you get the complex social emotions, okay? <laughs> now, if you take a look, by the way, <laughs> right. dog development stops right around here, okay? So what that means is that your dog does not feel guilt or shame or contempt or pride, okay? Now, some of you are going to say, no, 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 that's not the case. You know, we all know the case where we go away and we come back and find that our nice white carpet has been redecorated in earth tones. Um, and um, the dog seems to be slinking around and acting as though he's guilty. Well, that's not the case. What you really have over here is the fact that the dog has learned that when he sees you and when he sees that mess, really bad things happen to dogs. So he is feeling guilt, not emotion. Um, and not, uh, pardon, he's feeling fear, not guilt. Uh, so the golden rules for understanding dogs is, remember the questions to ask, could a two and a half year old solve this problem? Um, how would a two and a half year old child react in this particular situation? And if I were trying to teach this to a two and a half year old, um, uh, what method would I particularly use? And if you have a method, it's apt to work on the dogs. And by the way, for those of you who say, no, 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 my dogs, my dogs feel guilt, I can say it. Look, I taught university for 43 years, okay? And I know a whole bunch of 18-year-olds who haven't developed guilt yet. <laughs> and when all else fails, remember the sage advice that Lassie offered. Woof, woof, arruff. <laughs> <laughs>